Welcome everyone. I really hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and have a fantastic day. Hey folks and welcome back. So this is my second video about this demonstrator I created to show the loads that servos put on our systems. And I got a little bit of feedback from a person that said I didn't describe at all what's going on here. So I'm not sure if they weren't watching the video or they didn't have the volume turned up or they didn't read my descriptions. But please look at my description, folks, because just about all my information uh, that I don't discuss openly is in the description. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you're going to see two LED digital readouts. The left one is for a battery I have that's running the voltage only to the receiver. On the right is a voltage that is only running to the servos. Now, the way I do this is I use a Y harness. Now, if you look at this Y harness right here, this is set up where you have positive, ne negative, and signal going to everything. But the way I do it for running it to servos is I remove that one red wire there. So only the uh, negative and the signal wires are getting to the servo. So when I power up the receiver, the receiver power is sending the signal out. And when I plug another battery in to one side of this Y harness, on the other side of the Y harness goes out to the servos. That's how I power the servos on a second battery. And you'll need a switch on both of those. So a switch for the receiver, a switch for the servos. So I'm going to do a quick review, folks. I'm using a 4.8 volt four cell battery to demonstrate how the standard battery is that comes with most of the trainers we used to fly or most of the radios we used to fly and to show how much a fully charged brand new four cell battery drops voltage wise when you start putting the loads on the servo. Okay, so I have two other demonstrations I'm going to do. One is with a 6.6 .6 volt A123 battery, but this is all in the description, folks. So please look in the description and you're going to see what everything is. But the reason I did this was there was a big argument on Facebook where people were talking about the difference between losing a loss of signal between your transmitter and receiver and brownouts. And they were saying that brownouts are virtually impossible because the servos wouldn't have enough juice to move the control surfaces. But when they don't have enough juice to run the control surfaces, then they don't have enough juice to run the receiver. Now, this is interesting because I'm still using the same 4.8 volt pack. But I'm going into my radio and there's a setting where I can just tell all the servos to move at a very slow pace and watch how fast the voltage drops doing this. Okay, so it's just really interesting, folks, as I start to play around with this demonstrator, uh, some of the things I can show you. Okay, now I am going to, like I said in my first video, I'm going to do some different receivers with this. I'm going to do some different servo setups. I'm going to actually use a voltage regulator going into this so we can see how much a voltage shouldn't drop when we're using voltage regulator, but we don't know until I test it, right? But I just want everybody to realize that I'm only doing this so we can kind of think about how this affects our planes and especially with some of the crashes because I would say 90% of the crashes I see when a person's turning base to final, it's not your radio, it's you stalling the airplane. But I've seen a, two planes, like I described in my first video, that definitely had brownouts. You know, the plane was screaming through the air, they did a violent maneuver, and then all of a sudden the airplane was dead, and then right before it crashed, they regained control of the radio, but it was too late. And I will almost guarantee you that was a brownout, which means the voltage dropped below where the receiver would work and the receiver basically went off. And then once the load's off the servos, the voltage comes back up and you get your radio back. So in this test here, folks, I'm using some old A123 packs I made and they're two cells. So that's 6.6 .6 volts, fully charged, they're around seven or 6.9 or 7.1 volts, something like that when they're fully charged. And, um, the battery is behind my test rig here. So don't somebody goes say, oh, I still see the two 4.8 volt packs, which are marked on the front. It's actually sitting behind here, but you can see the voltage on the second meter up there that it's in the six volt uh, range. But the reason I'm doing these videos, folks, is so that you, you kind of understand 
that you, if you don't know everything about your radio, that's when you get into trouble. Okay, and some people are still using the 4.8 volt packs uh, and having a huge voltage drop, as demonstrated in my first video and in the beginning of this video. But uh, yeah, folks, I'm just doing this so you kind of understand what's going on with your radios. And of course, there's going to be trolls out there that will say, uh, this is wrong. So that's it for this video. Uh, folks, I'm going to have another video up once I get some different, um, some more batteries I can show you. I don't have any that have really low internal resistance like somebody asked. Uh I don't check the internal resistance on most of my non-LiPo batteries, to be honest with you. I don't use a lot of non-LiPo type batteries. But, yeah, that's it, folks. So, uh, have an awesome day. Please like and subscribe, and I'll have a next video up soon. Rock on. Bye-bye.